Welcome back to another episode of Alpine Garage. Today we are going to be adding some lights. Now I've had these lights for a little bit. I'm not actually going to say in the video where I got them, but I am going to put them down in the description and I think you're going to be surprised at how inexpensive they are and where I got them from. I will say that I am very surprised at how bright they are and how well made they are for the price that we paid for them. So we're going to show you not only how to wire your lights, uh, but also we're going to tell you about the lights that we bought. We went inexpensive. Uh, you can spend $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 on lights if you really wanted to do that. Uh, on the other hand, we wanted to spend a little bit less. Uh, we're not going to be doing a ton of night wheeling, although we will be doing some. So we wanted to get enough light to where we could do that on the rare occasions that we're going to be using a light bar. So we got these two ditch lights. Now this has six 5 watt LEDs, so this is 60 watts on this one. There's going to be 60 watts on the other one, and these are going to go on. These are going to be ditch lights that are going to go on the mirrors. We also have a 30 bulb, 5 watt for each bulb, so that's 150 watts that's going on the top bar as well. We've already mounted that onto the Bronco, and we're going to wire that up as well. We also have lights down for the bumpers. I'm not sure how I'm going to mount those yet, so I'm going to leave those out of this video. This video is going to be primarily for just basically how to wire. Now, if your Bronco came with, and most Broncos did, came with the pre-wiring in the vehicle, I'm going to show you some easy steps on how to connect those and also where those are running in the vehicle. So stay tuned. We're going to get these things mounted up and see how they look. Now, the cover for where you're going to put the accessory which is right here has a torque screw in it and these you can take out this one and this one you can take out with the toolkit that comes with the bronco so those are super easy and then what i did was i went ahead and i took this screw right here although you can use this one as well and that one might actually be a better one to use i pulled it out and sanded down the aluminum because there's some paint on it and used that as my ground so you don't have to run both wires from the two wire setup back into the engine bay. You can actually just run one to ground. Same for the top, same for any other light that you're using or any other accessory that you're placing on onto this network is that you want to ground it locally where it's at and then run the power wire to match the power wires that are in the Bronco. So that's what I did. Now, you'll notice because they're ditch lights, there's actually two of them. So what I did was I ran the ground to ground which is right here okay i went ahead and grounded it right there and then i ran the power and normally you're just going to run one power cable to your power source underneath here to our to our sets of wires underneath here but because i have two of them on the same switch i actually I spliced another wire in here that's going to run across to the other ditch light then on that ditch light i'm going to ground it to the same spot on the opposite side so this wire right here goes underneath this plastic cover all the way to the other side and it's going to connect into the power wire to the other light and then the second power wire is actually going to run the pre-wired wires for the bronco underneath the hood and then it'll light the whole system so that's kind of how i have it set up what i did here was i used heat shrink tubing to make sure that i have everything waterproofed and then I just took a piece of heat shrink tubing here, I cut a hole in the center of the pre-shrink tubing, and then I ran the wire, the central wire that goes to the other side through the center, and then ran the rest of it up so that when I shrink it, it actually remains waterproof down inside of this plastic cover. Put the plastic cover over it and we're good to go. Now we're gonna run the power wire across to the other side to the other ditch light. When you're trying to raise, you don't have to remove this panel this plastic panel that's on the top here in order to run the wire underneath. And in fact, if you do, you have to actually pull the windshield wipers off, which I don't think is necessary in this case. So what I did was I just loosened up each side by taking off the torque screw. And then I used a screwdriver and I just pried these up all the way along just to get underneath them. Then I took the power wire from this side and I quite literally just tucked it underneath and I, I basically pulled it through each one of these little tabs here. Just kept po poking it through, poking it through, poking it through all the way across till I got to the other side. And then I just pulled it straight. So now the wire's up in here. And uh, it's one piece of wire, so I don't have to worry about, you know, it being waterproof and stuff like that. It's completely shielded from any issues there. Now that I've got it all the way to the other side, I can actually close this. I'm not going to, I'm gonna leave it up just in case I have any issues. I'm gonna pull it back up again if I don't have to. But now let's go to the other side and I'll show you how to connect that. Now on the other side, you'll notice not only did I pull the cap off that goes to the mirror, but also I pulled out the accessory screw here and you can literally just unscrew the AM FM antenna right here. And that pulls that up just a little bit. And then I took the power wire, 
that I had run underneath the side here, centered it over, and then tucked it underneath the mirror uh, housing right here so that it comes up here. That's gonna be plenty of room for me to connect it to the pigtail that comes on the light. Now that said, I still need to take this screw off and I need to sand it down just a little bit in order to ground it. Sand the paint off of that aluminum. Okay, that's gonna make a good ground right there. Yours will probably come with a pigtail. My pigtail was kind of short, so I extended it, uh, extended the negative down to here. What I'm gonna do is I've got two pieces of shrink wrap or shrink tubing. I'm gonna take one big piece and I'm gonna go over both wires. This is just because I want to extend them a little bit, so I'm gonna create a little bit longer pigtail here. And then the second one is just gonna go over my positive cable because I'm going to attach that in here. So at this point, I'm gonna take my negative. Remember, I sanded this down, so now I'm just going to attach that get it tight and then I'm gonna take my positive because I know it's gonna tuck under here and I'm going to now this wire is black just because I had black wire but this is actually is a positive this is where the current is gonna be running if you want to mark that red you want to use red wire you want to use whatever color wire you can use that so now I'm gonna bring this down I'm gonna bring my tubing over the top and you can use connectors if you want to do that I just I like to use shrink tubing and twist the wires. All right, now I'm going to shrink this tubing up and get that nice and tight. All right, so now that's good. So then I'm gonna bring the second set of tubing down. Now I'm ready to start putting these caps back. So first I'm gonna replace this cap just by snapping it down and then we'll go in here and we'll attach our light. All right, so I want this light to come right around here. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring the wires to a point where they can come out of this casing. Now that I've got those snapped down, this is going to be popped up a little bit. I may reroute it later underneath this section and come right out this little gap right here instead of out this arm, which is probably what I'm going to do. Now we're just going to button everything back up here. So put this screw in. Uh, I'm actually going to replace the screw that came out of here with the screw that goes with this kit right here. And I also notched uh, the housing so that it sits flush when we have the light in there. So as soon as I get these buttoned down, I'll show you what it looks like. So here is a tip. Go onto your Ford Pass app, and if you don't already have the Ford Pass app, this is a good time to get it. So go ahead and go onto your Ford Pass app. It's gonna load. Then you're gonna see in there, service. Hit service right there. Then hit reference guide owner's manual and then the first owner's manual which is the second line down or at least on mine there's two owner's manuals one of them is interactive so you're going to click on this this is the interactive one go all the way four from the bottom and you're going to notice on that it'll say accessories hit accessories then hit auxiliary switches and then you're going to go to identify the auxiliary switch wiring click on that and then you get this list right here and this will show you all six aux switches, which colors they go with, and what amp they're rated at. Then if you come over here, these are the powered switches, okay? And those are all gonna be right here, right there. Now you also have non-powered circuits, which are lines that are run to the front, to the front pillar, and then also to the back. And those are gonna be B1, B2, C, D, and E. And those are gonna be right down here on this bottom part. You'll see, you'll see them kind of tied up there by color. And if you're going to, like, I'm not going to run any of the non-powered. I'm going to run the power directly to here. So I've decided, I've already got six locked up uh, inside the cab. So I'm going to use five, which is the blue and orange, which I've got right here. So I pull the blue and orange and cut it so that it's open right there. And then I'm going to link it directly to the wire coming from the power side of one of the units right here and I'm gonna have instant power just like that so what I did with this is I shrunk this and take a picture of it okay now you got a picture of it and it'll always be I'm actually gonna put it in a file that way you don't have to go back through the owner's manual and stuff but now I can just reference this picture and save photos and now I've got a picture of it uh, you can also do the same thing with the schematic that goes to if you go back Go to owner's manual. Let's open this up. 
all the way down to the bottom, auxiliary switches, and then locating the auxiliary switches. Go back to locating the auxiliary switch wiring, right there, and then it'll show you the four places that the wires are run. So they're run to the front, they're run over here to the pillar, they're run to the back on the passenger side right there, and then they also are run from the fuse box. So it'll show you those. If you want to take a picture of that, you should take a picture of that as well. And then now you've got everything in pictures, and you don't have to go back through the owner's manual again, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of wiring. That's my tip. And I'm going to toss a piece of shrink tubing right over the top of this. Bring this right through. I'm going to twist these wires together. If you want, again, if you want to put a connector on it, put a connector on it. A uh, connector would be good. I just like straight wiring with heat shrink tubing. And shrink that tubing down. Now that wire is complete. Now let's give this thing a test and we'll see what it looks like. And the next step would be to get the light bar done and we're going to go through this like rapid fire since you guys are experts on this whole wiring thing now. So I'm just going to go bingity bangity boom and I'll show you how you get your light bar set up without drilling a hole because Ford wants you to drill a hole and I don't think you have to. So I'm going to show you a way not to do that. Remember you already took a picture of the wiring diagram and my light bar is 150 watts. It's going to be about 15 amps. Uh, I'm going to save my 30 amp circuit right here which is the number one switch. I'm gonna save my number one switch, which is the 30 amp switch for my air compressor so that when Mandy is in the front seat and she's monitoring the PSI on the dash, she can actually shut it off at the number one switch. So that's what we're holding it for. The number two switch is 15 amps. Now this light bar that I'm putting on is gonna be less than 15 amps. It's gonna be about 15 amps. So I'm gonna use aux two, which is green and brown. If you go down here, you've got your green and brown right here. You may not be able to see it, but believe me, it's there. And then you're also gonna grab your white, which is non-powered circuit that goes to the front glove box. So I'm going to then tie together my 15 amp, which is green and brown, and my white, which is which goes to underneath the glove box, and I'm gonna twist those together, which I did. I'm not gonna finish them off right now because I wanna test it. So let's go into the cap. When you go to shut your glove box, there's a clip right here which keeps it from falling out. Hit that clip on both sides. That leaves it coming down. And you're gonna pop this arm out. And if you grab that with two hands, it'll actually pop that little arm out right there and then your glove box will fall down. You're not gonna be able to see this. But in here, there's a couple of wires. The white wire that you connected to the green and brown tube will actually run inside the stash. The white wire's right there. All you have to do is strip the end of it and then connect it to a gray and red wire, a gray and orange wire that is actually running underneath there. So that's what I did and I twisted those together. That took me maybe a minute to strip those. Now that gray and orange wire runs right up here into here, okay? So you have to take your visor off. Your visor is very easy. You're going to, here's a cover. Just use a flathead screwdriver and pop that cover off then this is mounted in there with a seven millimeter screw. Take that seven millimeter screw out, twist your visor, and then it will pop out and then disconnect the clip and you're there. So now there's your visor off. You're gonna pull this cover down and you're gonna see your gray and orange white right there. That's gray and orange, okay? So that's gonna be tucked up inside there. Now I have put a black wire, which you can see coming from my light bar so I'll show you how that's, this is just hanging loose right now, but it's actually run, all I have to do is tuck it. So let me show you how it did that. So here is my light bar coming off. The pigtail goes right there. So what I did was I then stripped and I actually put my ground right here. I had to clean the threads and I had to clean the base of my rack right here. But I put my negative right there and it held. So that's good. Now, you're supposed to drill, Ford wants you to drill a hole right down in through here, take your rack off. There's a little soft spot windshield mount where you can drill and then silicone. But obviously I don't wanna pull my rack off. So what I did was I extended the wire, I pulled up this right here. You can actually see the wire, I haven't finished it yet. 
hold this back just a little bit. There's some butyl rubber in there, and I'm burying it down in that butyl rubber. Just burying it down in there. Running it down here. Running it down here. And then I'm pulling, pull this up. You'll see the butyl rubber right there. And I ran my wire right underneath there. You can see that, pull this up, there's a clip. Pull that clip out and then run your wire underneath and back in. And now you have just run that wire into the cab right along where that visor pull down was. And I'm gonna tuck it in there and it's gonna be good and, and I will have no leaks because it, I didn't actually breach that gasket. The butyl is still really sticky. So I'm just gonna push that back down in and push that clip right back down in there. And that is a clean install right there. No drilling, uh, didn't have to put any silicone in it. It's like, it's like perfect. So that is installing ditch lights and a rooftop bar. So you can tell it's really easy to do. This probably, once you get the hang of wiring one of them, it'll probably take you 20, 30 minutes to wire up each light that you have. So at this point, it comes down to just making sure you have good grounds. As far as these lights are concerned, I'm gonna put a link down in the description. I'm still not gonna say where they came from because I think you're gonna be surprised. They cost me, this whole setup right here cost me less than $200. And I also have lights I haven't even put in, into the bumper yet. So I'm gonna be doing those in another video. Please like this video, that's how the algorithm finds us. And please subscribe as well if you like this content. We're gonna be doing a lot more wheeling trips, especially winter wheeling trips coming up. So this would be a good time for you to subscribe and hang out with us. That's a wrap from Alpine Garage. We'll see you in the next video.